Hello respected viewers, I'm George from Ireland and so here behind me the big headstone in the middle roughly shield shaped that is the last uh, resting place of Matthew Arnold so the celebrated um, poet who uh, was born in 1822 and departed this life in 1888 the age of 65 because he was born in December and died in, in April if I'm not mistaken uh, so Matthew Arnold um, he was born here at Laleham and uh, we are very close to the River Thames, uh, just south of, of Staines. My goodness, I think we're still in Surrey, but they, yeah, almost certain we're in Surrey. They did chop and change their county boundaries a lot in the 1970s, so I'm not sure it was the fair shire of Surrey when he was born. His father was Thomas Arnold, who was a Church of England clergyman um, who'd been to Oxford, um, Oriel, I think I have that right, um, and uh, he was a renowned schoolmaster, uh, now, uh, Matthew Arnold himself, he briefly attended Winchester College, as in where Rishi Sunak went, if I've got that right. And then he moved on to, to rugby school, where his father was headmaster. And Thomas Arnold, he really transformed rugby from being a sort of middle-ranking school to being a top-ranking school. And these days, probably regarded one of the top ten uh, public schools in the United Kingdom, but it very much wasn't so until he got there um, in, say, the, the 1830s. Wasn't headmaster for even that long, about 12 years but really made it pull itself up as bootstraps academically and in terms of sports and broader culture, music and drama, all the rest of it. Um, obviously, the game of rugby had started just before there. I mean, there are many different versions of it. The most popular one is that William Webb Ellis cheated, picked up the ball and ran, and football touched it down behind the goal line. And so then you're allowed to convert, kick it over the bar and so forth. But back to Matthew Arnold who was um, not, not, not so sportingly outstanding, but uh, was a no mean scholar. Obviously, Latin and ancient Greek were the core of the curriculum, as well as re religious no knowledge, which is only about, only about Christianity in those days, and Judaism in as much as it was uh, the, the, um, the root of Christianity. So then he went to Balliol College, Oxford, which was just rising to be uh, regarded as perhaps the most uh, outstanding college in Oxford. Benjamin Jowett became master sometime after it, he was sometime Regis Professor of Hebrew at Oxford University, and he's the one which made it be perceived as really the stellar college, um, the um, nursery of so many um, prancing proconsuls, governors general, so forth, colonial administrators, and indeed politicians, particularly, particularly those of a leftist bent in the 20th century. Matthew Arnold himself was not particularly political, so um, he got a, he got a um, first in, in classics at Oxford, um, but he didn't want to be a don. He wanted to turn his hand to poesy. He was able to compose, compose poems in Latin and ancient Greek uh, as in those days. Um, but uh, he realised that um, poetry didn't pay the bills. So he was married to Frances. He had six children with her. Um, so he became a school inspector to, to pave his way. Um, he said he didn't enjoy his um, school inspector at work over much, but he was uh, obliged to do so by his financial circumstances. And um, he's buried here with um, three of his sons and indeed one of his grandsons. So two sons on this side, one on the other, and um, uh, two of his sons, I noticed, died in 1868, not the very same day, so, but, but uh, died as children. Um, he had some daughters. One of his, the grandson there is from one of his daughters. Um, so he traveled around the country going to schools. It wasn't like Ofsted these days, looking through reams and reams of documentation. Child, child protection had not been invented, and caning pupils on their backside was perfectly standard for what we now regard as misdemeanors. So it wasn't about that, but to see that their erudition was sufficient, and uh, there was a lot of um, recitation of texts. Obviously, learning things by rote was far more important when we couldn't look everything up in the, in the uh, library, uh, sorry, on the online library. But even physical books were very expensive those days. So it's much more important to internalize the knowledge and be able to, to regurgitate. Uh, yeah, so um, he, he um, ended his life here at Laleham, where he begun it, died, and indeed is buried in this churchyard. Uh, what else can I say about him? So well known for Thursis, for example, um, uh, which is uh, dedicated to his, son, to his friend Arthur Hugh Clough, who died at the age of 41, another Oxonian. Uh, Arthur Hugh Clough grew up in Liverpool, the wealthy cotton merchant family, had spent some of his life in South Carolina as a child and been at university with Arthur Hugh Clough, um, best known for this pastoral poem about the Bothy of Tory Bethel or something like that. It's some place they'd gone in the summer uh, in North Britain. Uh, anyway, so he died quite young, and Thursus is based on a poem in ancient Greek by Theocritus, and it takes us from Boar's Hill, a bit to the south of Oxford, um, commanding a magnificent vista over the city. And it's perhaps um, most widely known for that line which really encapsulates 
the magnificence of Oxford when Matthew Arnold writes, that sweet city of dreaming spires, she needs not June for beauty's heightening. And he wrote many other, other um, famous poems. Dover Beach, for instance, the Oxford movement was going on at the time, uh, as in starting in 1833, John Henry Newman, other Anglican clergy, John Keeble, Edward Bouverie Pusey, and others, um, uh, Manning, and they began to move towards Catholicism, Anglo-Catholicism, first of all, practice Catholicism within the Church of England, publishing these tracts, sometimes known as the Tractarians. So Tract 90 came out by John Henry Newman, and he finally crossed the Tiber, took the next logical step, and so he uh, became a Roman Catholic, and indeed is a saint these days. Well, Matthew Arnold didn't go that far, and some of the others like John Keeble and uh, Edward Bouverie Pusey didn't either. They stayed within the Church of England. So it's perhaps surprising he was not ordained himself, and he could have been a don like that, because that was a prerequisite until 1871 for virtual, virtually all um, dons at Oxford or Cambridge had to be ordained in the Church of England. Some of them did it because they were intensely religious. Others of them did it simply because the only way to have an academic career. But it was a very comfortable birth once you had it. You could stay there for life. Obviously, they weren't allowed to wed. I think it's because he wanted to get married relatively early in life um, that, that, that that was a no-go. If you got ordained were a don, you could then get married. It was no disgrace. The college would say, well, you do it with our blessing, but you have to leave. And each college controlled several parishes around the country, say, you'll be the parish priest there. It goes with a big house for you and your good wife to fill with your progeny. Um, but anyway, so he was here um, uh, towards the end of his life. Um, he never made much money from poetry, though he was widely appreciated at the time. He didn't become the poet laureate. Alfred Lord Tennyson had that uh, office for most of um, the latter period of uh, Matthew Arnold's life. Um, it didn't win the prizes, perhaps he should have. He won some prizes at Oxford University. I don't think he ever carried off the Newdigate Prize, which had been going since the early 18th century, which Oscar Wilde, amongst others, won. Was it, um, was it Evelyn uh, War's father had won it as well? Um, so uh, that was him. He had those mutton chops. You see, I'm kind of cultivating myself, as was typical of um, a, um, uh, a high Victorian um, gentleman. So um, wrote uh, The Scholar Gypsy and others, if I'm not mistaken. His, his famous essays on cultural and anarchy, um, looking at um, Celticism and the Anglo-Saxons and so forth, subject of a D. Phil thesis by um, uh, Raymond Burke, a very renowned academic. So that is um, Matthew Arnold. And there are only a couple of other people I've known of with that surname, Arnold. Um, so his, his headstone really ought to be in better shape. It's a bit of a disgrace on Poetry Society doesn't do it because it's scarcely legible if you look there. Matthew Arnold, ladies son of the late Thomas Arnold, DD, as in Doctor of Divinity. Headmaster, look, they've written as two separate words, usually it's one, of a rugby school. Born December the 24th, 1822, died April the 15th, 1888. And there's a, there's a quotation in the Book of Psalms. His good wife, Frances Lucy Arnold, wife of Matthew Arnold, blah, 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 and daughter of the late Honourable Mr. Justice Reitman, as in her father was a judge. So she was born in 1825, so three years younger than him. She lived on to 1901, and there's another biblical quotation. And then um, sons on either side, or grandsons. So here is um, Trevenon William Arnold. Never heard of that as a Christian name. So his son. Yeah, uh, okay. And then the grandson down below. Right, thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe on Patreon. Donate on PayPal. Uh, because this is obviously a church which goes back many centuries, but it's been very extensively rebuilt in the 20th century. Uh, um, somewhat in a compatible, sympathetic, perhaps vernacular style. Right, toodaloo everyone.